Okay, Viper's videos back in the barn for another uh, video on another air gun that I recently got. And uh, this isn't going to be a quick and sick video and it's not going to be like a full bore review. It's just going to be kind of a uh, first time uh, cold shoot. Um, and when I say cold, I literally mean cold. Number one, I've never shot the gun before. Uh, also, it's extremely cold outside. A couple weeks ago, I had that quick and sick video with my SIG P365 CO2, and it was uh, mid-November, and we had our first snow. Well, now it's the 1st of December, and winter is truly in full swing here. It is <laughs> winter time. It's cold outside at morning here. It is about 21 degrees, so it's even colder than before. So hopefully this CO2 gun I'm going to show you guys and test out will perform okay. But again, first time doing anything with it. This is the Umarex SA-10, which I understand uh, stands for Salient Arms. I really want to thank all the other folks out there that have put out lots of videos on all the specs, the you know the conjecture, their ideas, their thoughts. So I'm not going to go into a lot of uh, specs and information about this, but I will uh, share some of my findings, uh, thoughts, uh, try to clear up some things. I, then we'll just talk about this a little bit and then and then shoot it. So anyway, you might say, why do I have this? Why did I want it? Well. I'd had it on my kind of wish list on Pyramid Air for quite some time. And frankly, if this only shot BBs, I wouldn't have been interested in it. But it does shoot pellets or BBs, but of course, because it's a rifle barrel, personally, I'm only going to shoot pellets out of it. I also thought the magazine system was really unique um, in that they've got the... <laughs> it's a, it's, they're magazines within a magazine, kind of redundant, but... You've got your three rotary magazines that fit on the top here, and I'll go into this in a second. You see this aluminum hatcheting system. Each time you pull the trigger, it indexes and turns, turns, turns. So that's part of the trigger pull. And so when you finish a magazine, of course you'd start out with uh, putting one in there, and as you finish the magazine, you can just pop it out, put it back in its placeholder, and put another one up there. All right, so then you've reloaded. Now, there's uh, some interesting thoughts about, about this. I've heard all kinds of conjecture about this is for BBs and these are for pellets, this is for pellets, these are for BBs, this is a placeholder, it has no use at all. Pyramid Air writes on their site that it is a bonus mag that is just lacking the performance of these aluminum insert uh, ratcheting Ismos. Um, I, I'm not sure what to think of it. I've, I've heard it talked about so many different things. Um, I tend to think it might be better thought of as a placeholder. Now that's an interesting thought for me even to say that because going back, being a boomer, I've had a lot of older uh, pellet guns in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and again most of those actually had just this plastic kind of ratcheting system. Now, what is the plastic, the polymer? I don't know, I gotta believe it's better now than it was back then. However, those did wear out frequently and people that used them a lot ended up screwing up a lot of their, their rotary magazines, I guess they called them. And uh, so it's quite an upgrade to have these aluminum ones. Um, why they didn't give a fourth aluminum one, I don't know. Personally, I'm okay with it either way. It's not a big deal. But And these are eight-shot mags, so it gives you, it looks like, 24. Uh, I've read that this gets anywhere from 40 to 72 shots. I guess I don't really know what this will get. I'm just going to settle for, you know, a, a magazine's worth, or would that be three magazines worth? Well, whatever. And... Um, Anyway, your shot count may vary, you know. What else can I tell you about? Oh, one of the complaints about this, something I found, someone on another video was nice enough to explain their findings that, uh, first of all, let me tell you the two complaints. One complaint I heard was people were saying that the pellets fall out of here too easily. Um, the other thing is people were saying that when you uh, put the empty magazine, or even a full magazine, I'm not even sure, on, on the little stem inside of there, that they fall out really easily. Um, I found that when these are empty, in fact, if you tip it, they do fall out. 
So um, the way I can address that, at least my experience, is that as far as the pellets falling out of here, what I found is that they load really easily and drop in, but of course they're not quite seated. And somebody in another video mentioned, I think he had mentioned that you drop them all in there and then there's little nubbies on the bottom of this and you put it in there and it, and it seats them exactly where they need to be. And I found that that works really, really well. And then what happens is those little nubs go in the skirt. So at least for now, nothing's fallen out. So if it's empty and it's a problem, I just realized that as I take the magazine in or out, okay, if I take it out, I just won't lean it forward. I'll tend to do almost like a real firearm, tipping it sideways, dropping it out this way, set it down. I know a lot of people like to put them in their pockets, so that could be problematic. Anyway, those are just a couple issues people were having some troubles with. So another uh, thing going back to the gun itself, a couple things, a lot of people are turned off by what they call bling, uh, this gold plated barrel or brass or whatever, titanium. And actually I did own a couple firearms that we had tried. They were stainless and there was a lot of trouble with galling and such uh, in the early days. So what was happening is they would have the stainless slide, the stainless frame, and then a uh, hard chromed barrel. Or, and what we ended up doing is when we started getting into compensators and lightening our slides uh, for make it go cycle faster and and so on, we did get into titanium nitriding barrels and some pieces like the uh, slide catch, the safeties, triggers, and other parts. But anyway, the titanium nitride at that time in the early 90s or mid 90s was, was gold. It was put on with cutters, uh, inserts, uh, drills, of course. If you go to the store, you'll see a lot of titanium nitrided uh, drills. Uh, but the one thing is it's, it's a hard coating and it's very, offers some uh, good substrate uh, uh, protection. But again, it, it's only as good as the material underneath. And that's one of the things that um, a lot of folks don't understand. It was really made not necessarily for bling in the beginning, but to uh, take something that was already hardened like a barrel, a drill, these kinds of things, and just add uh, longevity. It made it much more... Uh, you didn't, you didn't have as much chance of any kind of galling. There was better lubricity. It, it offered some slick properties compared to hard chrome. So some people were hard chroming, some people were titanium nitrating. I titanium nitrided. And I picked the gold back in those days and I got a lot of crap for it because it looked blingy. But it was actually for uh, utilitarian purposes, of course. But uh, there was black, but black was like double the cost. So now it, I think they're about equal, but back then, Gold was a way to go. So everybody thought you were blinging out your gun. Then all of a sudden you start to see people using Desert Eagles and all kinds of other guns where they started titanium nitriding them or even late, I don't know what kind of gold plating it was, but, um, and they did it more for bling. So a lot of people that aren't aware of the fact that this was originally designed for uh, lubricity and hard wearing, it would long lasting wear, it just outdid hard chrome back in the day. I think now there's just a lot of confusion on is it bling, is it for utilitarian purposes, and I'm thinking now it's probably for both. Um, I suspect people just get it done because they like the look, but back in the day that really was just to make the parts bearing surfaces on each other slide better. As a bonus, uh, for some people they like the bling, but for those that are turned off by it, I just want to tell you, it, it, you know, it's not really supposed to be a bling per se, it's really supposed to be a something to make the metal perform better. But on a pellet gun, well, <laughs> it's bling, okay? Or it's just, you know, recreating what Salient Arms does in their custom work, so on and so forth. Okay, that was really long-winded. So other than that, uh, another complaint that I had heard is mag sticking. Uh, some people were saying that they were upset that they go like this and the magazine stops and it takes more effort to push it up than the other CO2 pistols. But if you take a look at this, I mean, you're asking a lot trying to shove this very heavy metal magazine and trying to seal the front of that rotary magazine on the front of this. So, and plus, it's going into some kind of a retention device to hold the magazine in. So, if anything, actually be glad. You've probably got a better seal um, as long as it is, is the way it's designed to be and not broken or bent or anything wrong. 
to me, I mean, when I'm, okay, now there's kind of where it stops. And like, well, not really. If you have a real gun, you got to jam that sucker because you're pushing bullets down on a follower. With, it's not easy. So you just push it in place. And then what you've got is now the top of the magazine is right here. And the front of that rotary face is sealing on a little rubber gasket on the barrel. Hopefully you can see that. So I have no idea exactly, I didn't really measure anything exactly why it's really tight or not tight, but the point is I did some, you know, just visual inspection. Everything seems to be in line. I don't see any rub marks inside the magazine. Pretty much, does it drop free? Yeah, it drops free. So to me, I mean, if you've had any real firearms, this actually feels real. I mean, it feels like I'm pushing down on a follower with bullets in it, um, cartridges. So yeah, I wouldn't... I don't know, maybe they're having different issues, but maybe even know where it latches in place. But in any case, yeah, okay, right there is where they're, the trouble is. Just push it in, you're good to go. So anyway, enough talking about that. That's why this couldn't be a quick and sick video because I'm yammering on too much, so feel free to fast forward. But anyway, I was saying, the reason I got this is because, oh, I never did finish that, did I? Pyramid Air offered me the other day about two weeks ago, $15 of bonus bucks that could be spent right away and combined with ones that you already have. Well, I only had five other bonus bucks, but that equated to 20 bucks off. And it was pretty much any purchase. It didn't have a dollar amount. So again, I look at my wish list and what do you see? There's that thing. We well, had a choice of getting this for um, $89 just for the gun alone or $99 with a kit. And what that kit included was uh, these 300 of these Diablo basic. I got 1500 Umarex BBs and also 12 of their CO2 um, cartridges in a box. So basically it's about 20 bucks worth of stuff for an additional 10 bucks. So um, I went ahead and, and bought the $99 one, then my bonus bucks, everything. So this came to $79.99 and then I got free shipping because I had bought an extra magazine for my Diana Bandit and some uh, little cartridges for the uh, BO2 single action army revolvers. So in any case, I did pretty well. I got free shipping and 20 bucks off and so I bought it. Oh yeah, in case you're noticing this laser, you might, see, I'm sure half of them say, wow, that looks really cool. And the other half are saying, wow, that's really stupid. <laughs> you got a pellet gun, why you got a laser? Well, it doesn't really matter. I'll just share with you kind of um, why I'm doing it. It's basically, I call it SA, TC, silly ass tactical. It just so happens that I had had this old fashioned laser, and this is actually a flashlight holder or some kind of a holder because it's plastic. It doesn't move, it's actually got a really tight grip, especially on this nice size Picatinny rail on the bottom. Not really any big deal. So I just wanted to throw it on there and I will give it a try. I've got it actually sighted in at about 21 feet based on the top of these uh, sights. Oh, yeah, the sights. Some people like the sight, some people don't. Um, I find these are just kind of your uh, combat rear sights with the uh, slide racking. So if you uh, had this on a real firearm and one of your arms was immobile or tied up and you needed to rack your slide, you can put it on the edge of a table and charge your gun that way. So at least they kind of went with a more modern sight like that where the other ones are more ramped. And it's a low profile front sight that was black and it, it truly was hard to see. So some people put white on it. I had some uh, day glow orange. I just uh, put a little tape around there and just dabbed it on twice, let it harden. It looks pretty nice. It's a... So what I've got is I'm going to try three different ones and I'm not crying. We're only going to do some accuracy testing. I'm at 10 yards, uh, 30 feet exactly. I am going to bench it at least in the beginning. And uh, I'm going to fire the um, Diablo Basics that came with it first, then the Crossman Premier magazine of them, magazine of them, and then I've got these little match green 5.25 grain alloys. So i got to wonder, I'm sure they're going to print a different um, kind of impact, but it should be kind of cool to see, see how they print. Anyway, so we'll give that a shot, and I'll take you down to where our typical target is down here. 30 feet away. And hang on for a second, I want to switch this around. 
Okay, so I am uh, ready to go. I kind of straightened around so it's a little bit easier for me to to put the camera. Hopefully it's at a good enough angle and as always I hope I don't shoot the camera but I'm going to start off with the Diablos. So take off the placeholder, bonus mag, not long lasting performance mag, etc. And these would be the Diablo Wad Cutter 7.0s and then you put this back in the placeholder and again if you're oh yeah that does oh that will just fall out of there I see okay whatever just hold it backwards don't be too concerned hold the gun safely push it in I do have the safety on the safety would be this uh, slide catch side release forward is safe backward is so now it's in safe and backwards like that and um, I'm gonna go bench it at uh, 30 feet and let's see I think what I'll do is just to get a feel for it, I'm sure they're going to all pattern slightly differently, but uh, I'll start with the Diablos in the center here and we'll see where it goes. And again, no laser at this point, just uh, sights. All right. Oh, one last thing. If you notice any editing, um, because it's so cold, I'm going to actually wait at least 8 to 10 seconds between shots. It's not that I need to line up the sights or anything that long, but I'll try to edit most of that out. I just want to let the CO2 recover as much as it's going to in these cold temperatures. And maybe it's a moot point, but whatever. Safety on. Wow. Um, okay, that's, I mean, I realize I'm bench resting, but my goodness, that's a really good accuracy. This isn't, I don't believe, a target gun, but, oh, that's really good. So that was eight rounds, I believe. I, mean, I suppose I should double check. I actually tried, yep, eight rounds of uh, the Diablo basic. Okay, so here's what I was saying. I'll just always try to keep it, you know, laying backwards. So now I'll do the Crossman Premier. I think those are 7.4 uh, wad cutters. And I will shoot at the left-hand bullseye and see how that goes. Wow, so far that's, that's really nice accuracy. All right, same thing, uh, 30 feet bench. Okay. All right, I really didn't do anything different, and and frankly, I'm pretty sure if we, you know, you can rewatch the video, but I'm pretty sure I had the orange dot right about here, and the first hit was somewhere in here. So it, I am trying to wait between shots, but in any case, obviously, it really, really likes the Diablos. I'm glad that I don't know why Pyramid Air chose that in the package, but if if they were testing them. Um, 
I mean, there's still nothing wrong typically with this group. I'm not sure what happened there. That could have been me. I will say one thing. You definitely want to um, hold this tight because uh, for some reason with all this other action that's going on in there, if you have a loosey-goosey uh, kind of hold on it or limp wristing it per se, um, it's definitely going to pattern all over the place. Um, I don't think I did that with either of them. I just think that it likes the Diablos better than the than the cross, but again, most people will tell you that's still pretty acceptable for a, a gun of this nature, CO2, cold weather, um, so on and so forth. But uh, anywho, um, that's unbelievably ex exceptional. This is acceptable. And now what I'll do, put it on safe, sorry about that, um, is now do those uh, H&N Sport I forget what they're called, Green Sport. These would be, I think, 5.23 grain uh, alloys. And let's see how they do over here. So we'll see what happens. But, all right. But so far, I'm really, really impressed with this. The blowback is, is real nice. It feels pretty cool. Let's give it a try. Okay, well, boy, you, I could definitely tell they were they were shooting just a little bit faster. It just, so the Diablo basic wad cutters did really, really well. The uh, Crossman, maybe these were me. I, I don't really know, but th the basic group is really nice with a couple of flyers. The, that's a real, just a kind of a consistent, I mean, what is that, probably inch and a, inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter. And this here looks like probably five-eighths, maybe even a half. But wow, that's really good grouping for cold weather, first time shooting it. Um, of course, it's benched, but still, I mean, the gun still has to perform to a degree. And you can really feel the kickback. That's a pretty heavy gun, but it's a pretty heavy slide. So, I mean, you can feel that. So, let's go back and finish this off. But, uh, so... Well, there's the pellets I used. These are the ones that came with it, which I'm really glad they did. Um, if I shoot this a lot more, I'll probably just... Well, actually, I got a ton of wad cutters, different ones. I'll, I'll see if some other ones perform as good as this. But I'll be honest, it, I'm uh, real happy with that. It worked out really well. Let's see. I'm getting out of... But, yeah, I don't know what to say about it. it, it the sight picture is pretty well, it works pretty well. It, it seems to shoot just a touch low, but uh, again, I mean, I don't know what 21 degrees does to CO2, but I gotta believe in the summer, that's probably gonna zip up pretty good. So, um, it, it appears to shoot point of aim then. Um, so it's kind of nice for sights that are pretty much fixed. Th I've heard this is drift adjustable, but I can't really tell, and in considering the, the pimp impact, I'm not going to mess with it. So I think I'll try the laser at 21 feet and see what happens. Okay, so I'm back and I have loaded up the magazine with eight more of these Diablo Basics that came with it. And I am going to stand at that mystical, here's 21 feet, the way I've got the target set up and use the laser and see how that works offhand. So see how tactical versus whether it actually helps. So And see how I sighted it in, see how, if it's good point of aim with the, the sights and such. So here we go. <clears throat> yeah, my hands are freezing. <coughs> All right, let's 
let's see how it does. That wasn't high. Yeah, I'm not real good with lasers, I'm afraid. I think I figured out what, wow, that's actually pretty good. It's just that it grouped a little bit. Uh, the point of impact was higher, and I, was, I think the bullseye was right here. So the closer you get, obviously, the higher it shoots. But it shows that at least I have that laser pretty dialed in. And I think lasers, really, the whole idea of them, uh, obviously, for long range, is just to help with target acquisition uh, in your scope. And then on pistols, it would mean that you wouldn't have to aim. You could just be standing back 20 feet and say you can't really see your sights and now you can go like that and just shoot by you know here is going to be how big would that be you know a one inch group of 21 feet uh, you know if you can shoot a nine inch pie plate you're doing pretty good so in any case even though it's tactical it uh, seems like it worked out pretty good at least not a total waste to have it on here it did work so I don't, in any case, okay, I'm done blabbing. I hope you learned a few things. Uh, I tried to cover a couple things, maybe that some folks had right or wrong or indifferent. Uh, looks like there's still juice to go. <laughs> there, see, it just fell out. So, and that's because I'm fiddling with my hands. So, yeah, it does look like they can fall out, but if you're careful, that's just going to be something we'll just have to live with if, if you like the gun. It ain't going to bother me, but. For those that it does, yeah, it's unfortunate, but so as always, uh, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed seeing the Umarex SA-10. Take care.